Hi everyone, how are you doing? Dan here, and today I've got another tutorial for you, this time in Adobe Premiere Pro again. I want to show you how to blur somebody's face and then track that blur, going from something looking like this to something like this. So as you see, the blur is perfectly tracked to the face and it's done a really, really good job. There's many uses for this effect, but the main one I can see being like, maybe you've shot a documentary and somebody doesn't want to be seen. So you can still use the shot and you can keep a great shot, but you can just blur them out and track the blur so you don't have to do it manually. It's a great automatic way of doing it. So let's get into Premiere and get started. As always, first things first, we need to get our footage into the software. So I've got mine here. Then we just need to make a new sequence. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos, just make sure to go and check them out on my YouTube channel. There's tutorials in After Effects, Premiere, Photoshop, and going forward, I hope to do a lot more. Getting more into the camera side of things, 360 cameras, um, maybe some drones. I want to show you how to do good time lapses, especially in a city and of landscapes. And I want to be doing a course on how to go from automatic to manual on your camera. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel to see when these are all released. Right, back to Premiere. So once we've got the bit of a clip on the timeline, what we want to blur out, it's a fairly quick and easy process. First things first, we just need to go to Effects and we need to find a blur. So we've got a blur here and we've got directional blur as well. Both work just as well, but I really like the look of the Gaussian blur. So I'm gonna go with that for now. I'm just gonna pop that on. Just a quick tip for Premiere, anything what's blue in the Effects tab is a parameter you can change um, and you can also animate most of them as well. And I'm gonna increase the blurriness to about 35. So that's looking really good. But the problem is, is we've got everything blurred out, not just a subject's face at the moment. So let's sort that out. So we'll do this by creating a mask. Just use this here. And then just drag the mask to the subject's face. It's a really quick, easy process. You don't have to be too accurate, just you know, close enough to cover all of the face. Let me know in the comments down below if you know where this is, if you know where this is being filmed. It's quite a cool location. Um, I'll let you know at the end of the video too. I'm also just going to quickly change the mask feather as well, just a little bit, just so the blurriness blends into the background a little bit more. I'm just going to pull that to about 12. Now, in the old days, we'd have to animate this, so we'd go from mask path, and then we'd go forward a few frames, we'd line the mask up again, we'd go forward a bit more, do the same, forward a bit more, do the same, and as you can see, that works quite well. But if you had a lot of shots to do, or you had really, really long shots, this would take a long time to do. And it was quite a repetitive process, so it's quite good work. Premiere can do this automatically now. So all we have to do is hit this button here, track selected mass forward, and you can do it backwards too, but we'll just do it forwards for now. So as you can see, the M1 beta version is absolutely flying through this. Now we'll hit play, and the mask is tracked to our subject's face, and we can use this shot now. So as, as I was saying earlier, this is really, really good for if you've done some filming, maybe in the city, or you've been filming an interview, and you've got someone in the background who doesn't want to be there. Now instead of having to delete the shot and where you're not able to use it anymore, you can blur them out so they're not identifiable, and then you can still use the shot. So use your own judgement on that with how much you need to blur them out, but as long as you can't identify them, I'm sure everything's going to be fine. So thanks again for watching guys, and make sure you check my other videos out as well, there's a lot of tutorials already online. And as I mentioned earlier, I do plan on doing a lot, lot more. All the likes, comment and subscribes mean a lot to me and I do really, really appreciate them. So thank you for that. And I did mention earlier on in the video, I'd let you know where that location was and it's in Manchester. It's by uh, Piccadilly Station and it's a really cool location. It's actually outside the old Vimto factory. Thanks again for watching guys. Cheers.